Okay, so I have the front of my fun little tote, my little wood tote, and I've got this already chalk painted with a nice neutral cream color. The next thing I'm gonna do is my top coat, whatever brand you decide to use for your top coat, and let it dry, because then I'm going to paint on my beautiful, or excuse me, put on my beautiful cactus transfer here. This is the Desperado transfer. And you guys know as well as I do that you have to have a top coat over your chalk paint. If you didn't know, now you know. So basically you want to give your transfer some tooth, something to stick to. So you have to have top coat over your chalk paint so that your transfers have something to stick to. Otherwise the chalk paint is basically kind of like a sooty dusty finish and doesn't have anything tacky for the transfer to essentially sit on. Okay, so I've got my nice even distribution of top coat. Tilt it to make sure you've got every single area covered. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just dunk it in my cup of water so that doesn't get dried in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and dry this up. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut out our cactus. Your big guy is obviously too big for this project. So I'll set him aside and use him later. But like, I kid you not, I couldn't have gotten a more perfect fit for the front of this panel. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and just peel this off. Just give it a nice little pressing to get it to stay put and start transferring away. So at this point, if you wanted to just do clear gesso only where the cactus was, you could. But I would strongly suggest actually like painting the entire thing with it. But um, your gesso does separate over time, particularly the clear gesso, it just kind of happens. So I just kind of use my transfer sticks to the most. So big brush, clear gesso. This is not white gesso, it's clear. And basically the clear gesso is gonna give my watercolor something to stick to. Otherwise, there's a really good chance the watercolor is just gonna kind of beat up, sit on the surface and not dry. And if it does dry, it's gonna be kind of wonky and may not stay exactly where you wanted it to be. So I am applying a nice even distribution of it. I wouldn't say that like I'm caking it on, but I do want there to be a nice little film of clear gesso. And if you go too thick, sometimes you accidentally cover up too much of the actual transfer. Clear gesso is clear, but like if you put too much on, it can get kind of milky. All right. So again, clear gesso across the entire surface. And I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth from end to end, side to side, make sure I got everything. And we're gonna go ahead and dry that up. Okay, so our entire backdrop is completely dry. I have my watercolor brush, I have some watercolor paint. My entire surface has been clear gessoed, so it's prepped and ready to go. And I'm just gonna play with some different greens inside of the cactus 
while the layers are still wet, I will drop in more colors just for varied interest. So that was kind of a nice limey green. I'm gonna drop in a little bit of a darker green. And as I go down, I can start adding in something like a nice um, blue color because you're going to end up getting more shadowy as you get down closer to the foreground of your painting here. Come back up into that nice soft green. The more playful you are with color, the more interesting these pieces will be. You really can't go wrong with leaving white either. So don't feel like you have to do this, and I've said this before, don't feel like you have to go edge to edge with color. Sometimes just having a little bit of white to attract your eye to those spots is really appealing. So I'm just coming back in with a little bit more of that blue I did in my shadowy area. More light yellow. Okay, so that's a pretty little one. Maybe a little more blue down at the bottom because it's starting to soften up on me a little bit. Watercolor does get very soft in color as it dries. Let's go with a different green here. This is a um, kind of like a wintry spruce, a dark blue green. It doesn't want to be controlled. The more you just let it flow and be free, the better it's going to be. Again, rinse my brush, coming in with water. Water is your best friend when it comes to watercolor. It helps the color separate and flow and dilute. If it's a granulating color, you get to see even more varied interest in there. And I'm going to pick up a very untraditional color here. This is Bordeaux. I am crazy about Bordeaux. So if you notice, I'm not brushing as more as I'm like just touching the tip of my brush with water on it into these areas. So I'm not like blending it back and forth. If you're blending back and forth, you're going to get mud. All these colors are going to mix together and you're going to get weird colors of brown and you're going to be like, what happened? You overworked it. Let's go with kind of a fun sunny yellow maybe for this one. Rinse the brush. I'm going to come in with a kind of a rosy pinky color, it's called Quinn Rose. And when mixed with that yellow, it's absolutely beautiful. That yellow was separating a lot, so we're gonna have to kind of reintroduce it again. This will take a little bit to dry too. And I would suggest that you let it dry naturally. Try not to do it with your heat tool because you're just gonna blast the color all over the place. 
It needs time to really soak in. All right, and so just to keep this cohesive, I'm gonna use some of the same greens that I used to begin with. Every one of the cactus has its own personality, but it's okay if they're not all showstoppers, if that makes sense. You know, you can have some be just a little bit more tame in color. They don't all have to be super, super vibrant. So I just introduced um, kind of a turquoisey color. Very pretty. Dropping in some more of that green because it was softening up as that was drying. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, some of these layers are still wet, which is good. It'll just make this next step a little bit more adventurous. I'm gonna pick up and do a little bit of splatter with some of the same greens that I had used earlier. Do as much or as little splatter as you want. This is your masterpiece. And again, just to kind of tie things together and make them cohesive, I do want to sort of use similar colors throughout. So I'll spot a little of that Bordeaux into these other cacti, even if I didn't use that color in its base color. Now really, really crazy, really, really adventurous, splatting over your wet color with nothing but water on your brush. And anything that was sort of just sitting with a pool of color is going to wick out and kind of flow and do some really kind of magical stuff. Like I said, if any of these bled outside of their walls, it's totally okay because we're kind of making them do this anyway. We're gonna go ahead and let this dry up and I'm gonna come back in with some white details. We're back and our cacti are totally dry and really, really pretty and vibrant. Sometimes what we want to do is reintroduce a little bit of white. So I'm coming in with like a really, really tiny um, brush. This is like an 18 over zero. And I'm just gonna kind of add in some little pricklies. And my, my color, my actual background color is kind of a, an off-white. Just be careful that you don't do these like all perfectly symmetrical and all in exactly the same spot. It's really more interesting if you mix it up and kind of put them in different areas. And then for the final one, I'll just do some more little dots on this one as well. Mark making is basically what we call it when we're doing this in mixed media projects and stuff like that. So just making little marks, you're just basically doodling with a paintbrush. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and dry this up completely and then we're gonna give it a spray fixing and you'll be good to go. So our finishing touch is a spray fixative. So this is a fixative. Typically you want to do this outside, obviously I'm doing it inside for recording purposes, but uh, when you're doing this, don't get too close. You don't want to accidentally reactivate the watercolor again, but what you do want to do is make sure that you get every bit of this, including all those little flecks of color, so that they're nice and sealed. So I'm just kind of starting from one part of the project and working my way over, and that was one coat. So I would let this dry 
and then I would go ahead and come in with a second coat, possibly a third coat, depending on how much you actually laid down the first time. So this is a fantastic way to seal your watercolor if you're trying to put it on something where you might potentially want to wipe it off or if it might be coming into contact with moisture. Like say for instance you had this in a bathroom, the steam from the shower could potentially make your watercolors run. So you would want to seal it. Two to three coats of this, it takes like maybe 10 minutes to dry in between. I hope you guys had a blast painting wildly vibrant cacti. Thanks for joining me guys. Have a good one.